Hello, my name is Lisa Curcio, and I would love to welcome you here to Lisa's Stamp Studio. This is a YouTube live streaming event, and today is Monday, July 5th, and the year is 2021. I have four ways to teach you to use your alcohol markers to create easy and unique backgrounds, and they're completely different mediums. So you're going to want to hang with me for the whole video so that you can learn it in multiple different ways. In addition to that, I have lots of tips about those different mediums so that you can recreate these at home very easily. Whether this is your first time joining me here for the live stream or you are here watching the replay, I'm so glad that you've come by. Thank you so much. Now, before we get started, there's a couple things I want to go over with you. And the first is this. There's going to be a link down in the video description below when tonight's live stream is over that's going to navigate you to this very extensive project sheet. There you're going to be able to download it for free. It's going to include multiple pictures of each of the projects I'm going to share with you tonight. And there's a lot of them as well as the cutting dimensions and all the supplies. I made it nice and easy for you. That link is not available just yet for those of you live streaming. It's gonna be after the live stream is over. In addition to that, we would love to chat with you during tonight's stream, or perhaps you're watching the replay. We'd love to have you leave a comment. You can do so by logging into your YouTube account, which is your Gmail address. It's the only way to chat or comment. That is very much a rule of YouTube and not of Lisa's Stamp Studio. And then finally, I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce you to Gina Hawley. You'll see Gina's name here in blue and a little wrench next to her name. She is our moderator here at Lisa Stamp Studio. And if you look closely at your, her name, you'll see she's also a Curcio. Gina is my daughter and she has been stamping for 23 years. So she is more than capable of answering your stamping questions as well as here providing links for you. Because quite honestly, there is no way for me to keep up with the live chat while I'm trying to teach you some new projects. So I hope that you'll appreciate the moderation. Now, I also want to point out, although Gina and I are separated by an hour's difference, we do live in Florida and we are preparing for Tropical Storm Elsa. The weather is supposed to amp up here in just a little bit. And if it does, for some reason, lose power, either on Gina's end or mine, just know it's not a glitch, it's because of the storm. But we have checked the radar and we've checked all of our connections and we are praying we're gonna be good to go for this entire live stream. I think we're ready. Let me go ahead and get the camera situated. Here we go. If you're gonna enjoy tonight's live when it's all over, it would be a huge favor for me if you would go ahead and you would click on that thumbs up button and share this video with your crafting friends pin it to Pinterest or put it on social media that helps us in a huge way here on YouTube. As a reminder, the entire month of July and the first few days of August are going to include a 15% off designer series paper sale. I love designer paper, love it. 15% off in my opinion, that's huge. That's like free shipping and a little sales tax, right? Depending on where you live. Beautiful papers are available. You can check out all that information over at lisastampstudio.com and click on shop. That'll lead you over to my website. We're gonna start by protecting that work surface and this is a Teflon sheet. Now I know there's a little bit of a glare, so bear with me, that's not much I can do about that because of the lighting, because I wanna make sure you can see really, really well. And I will do some zooming in so it's a little closer for you. This is not sold in my online store. And I'm gonna be using several products tonight that are not in my online store. They're what I call my craft room favorites. They're not stamping up products, but there's things that I've used here in my studio that are tried and true, and I want to make sure you get an opportunity to get your hands on them. So over at lisastampstudio.com, click on shop, and then craft room favorites, and then just scroll. How many of you have alcohol-based markers? You are going to love tonight's video because I have four different ways to create very unique and easy backgrounds for you using them. Let's start first with a piece of vellum. Now I have seen lots of videos with using vellum in different manners to provide some backgrounds, but tonight we're gonna to do things a little bit different. We are going to use a heat tool as well. And for those of you that are not familiar with the heat tool, I am going to warn you, the microphones that I have are extremely sensitive. So when I turn this on, you'll notice after about a second or so, the sound will be a little bit different. But this is important to teach you the technique, so just bear with me in between, okay? I am actually gonna use these alcohol markers directly on the vellum, and then we're gonna bring in another component, and that is this. This is alcohol. Now, it's not your typical rubbing alcohol. It's 99.9%. .9%. 
I did a ton of experimenting and I want to teach you some of the things I learned. If you use something under like 90%, your paper is going to curl and it's going to be a real job to attach it to your cardstock to finish a card. Now we're going to use this one and create a full card with it. And then I have several other techniques and finished cards to share with you. So make sure you stay with me. This is also in my craft room favorites. What I did is I used a small funnel and I actually filled one of the Stampin' Spritzers. Now these are in my online store. This is a Stampin' Up product. You get several of them in a package, which is great. You just unscrew them. And I used my little funnel and I filled it up with alcohol. So my spritzer is all ready to go. I'm just gonna take that cap off and lay that off to the side. If you don't like getting your fingers dirty, go ahead and wear a glove and just remove it and throw it away. Quite frankly, I'm able to take the alcohol and if anything's on my hands, it's gonna come right off. You're gonna notice on this piece of vellum that I have scored it at a half an inch here and a half an inch here. And I did that on purpose in order to finish the card. And this will make more sense as we get moving along. I am going to start with this one. This is the dark Bermuda Bay. I'm going to tell you right now that this is going to be very, very addicting. So when you go to buy your alcohol, don't skimp, get yourself a nice size bottle because you are going to have so much fun. You're gonna to wanna to use the brush tip. They are labeled by the line that's here. I am going to start by creating some color here at the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna scribble that on and you're gonna see I'm kind of using the side of my marker. I'm just preserving that tip so that I can use it on other projects. And you can add as little or as much as you want. I also recommend that you use a larger piece of vellum than you're going to need, okay? I'm gonna get my heat tool right nearby. I am going to hold this in my hand and I am very carefully going to look for that little opening here, which is the nozzle sprayer for my spritzer because boy, I've had that turned the wrong way. You're gonna to wanna to work in a well-ventilated area. Remember, this has a very high content of alcohol. You are going to spray the cardstock. And what's going to happen is the ink is going to move. We are going to turn on the heat tool. And I remember I told you it's gonna get loud. I'm gonna to try to talk loud. The heat tool is gonna to do two things. Watch, it's gonna move the ink and it's going to dry the ink. Because of the high consistency of alcohol on here, it's actually going to do all the work for you really nice and quick and easy. That Teflon paper underneath here is protecting my work surface, which I love. And I just roll it up and rubber band it when I'm all finished. And there I have a little ink along the side. And I think you get the gist. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. I'm going to recommend that if you do more than one color, you work in sections. Now I've just got a little rag here and I'm just going to wipe that up and I'm going to wipe up my side. I am going to make sure now that that is good and dry, which it is because the alcohol is going to dry very, very quickly before you move on to your next color. Now, this may not look impressive, but just wait. I am moving over now to the dark pumpkin pie. Now, because vellum is opaque, it actually is going to be a little bit more predominant with the darker shades, but experiment. Now, wait till you see the other techniques I'm going to teach you with these alcohol-based markers. I'm gonna take this now and I'm gonna add some color in areas where there is none of that Bermuda Bay. Now those little areas that I'm overlapping, what do you think is gonna happen when we activate the alcohol on here? We're probably gonna get a little bit of bleeding, right? But that's okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little color here and a little color there and we can always come back. I'm gonna hold this in my hand again. That gets it all prepped and ready, checking my nozzle so it's facing away from me and I am going to spray. What you want to do is you want to make sure that you are aware that colors that get mixed together can get muddied. Now, here's my tool. I'm going to take this one and I'm going to rub that into that one a little bit. And then I'm going to move my color around. This is so much fun. I mean, you're just going to be able to go on and on and on. I am not worried about some muddied areas. I'm actually looking for that because I want consistent areas that are going to have dark spots and light spots and wait till I show it to you on white cardstock. All right, just drying up a couple areas there. And you can see because of the content of the alcohol and the heat tool, this goes incredibly quickly. So I've got a little rag right there and we're just gonna wipe that up. Do you see how I added a little color down here? But because I did the Bermuda Bay first and I allowed it to dry, I was able to place that color here without creating more of a bronze tone, which is what happens when they're mixed together. Now I wanna show you one other thing, and I know you're gonna giggle when I show you this. 
Do you know what this is? This is a nasal syringe. This has never been used in a nose. I bought this specifically for this technique. Some of you may be new to paper crafting and don't have a heat tool, and I want to show you the coolest thing. So I've got some of that pumpkin pie up here. So let's go ahead and go back to that Bermuda Bay, and let's add a little more color around that. Let's go down inside of there a little bit. And again, we're going to work outside those lines. I'm going to cap that, and I am going to hold this once again so I have a little grip on it. And we're going to get this wet. Remember, the color is going to move. Watch. This is going to allow me to puff the color a little left and a little right. And you're going to notice it's not as intense as the heat tool, which means you can really move this from one place to the other. And it's quite fun and therapeutic, to be quite honest with you. Those of you with kids and grandkids this summer, this is a project they're absolutely going to love. Now, keep in mind, as this dries, it's going to become more of its true tone. Now, I know you're probably thinking, that doesn't look like too much. Mm -hmm. Okay, wait. I'm going to put this one aside because I have one that is completely dry. Now, if you're worried about your hands, let me give you a little quick tip. Spritz them, wipe them off, and then your alcohol is going to be gone. Really quick and easy. And I'm going to set that off to the side because we've got a lot more technique to do. I just want to make sure this is dry before I bring in my cardstock. All right, I am bringing in a piece of basic white cardstock as my base, and I am going to fold this in half. It's already scored. You know what I wanna do? I'm gonna move this out of the way because I think that's gonna be a little bit less glaring for you. And I am going to grab my bone folder for that nice crisp edge, and we're gonna go over that. Remember I told you I had those score lines? Mm -hmm. Look at this paper now. Look, look, look. Isn't this gorgeous? It's amazing how it looks on top of cardstock versus just the background. Now, you recall that I had scored those areas here, and of course they're well hidden now because I've got the paper um, covered with color. But I'm gonna go over those score lines very, very carefully. I wanna make sure that there's not too much covering my vellum. And I'm gonna tack on one of those score lines here, and I'm gonna go up here to the top, and if you're like me and you don't ever score perfectly, boy, you're going to love this tip I'm going to give you. Flip the cardstock open and upside down. Make sure your bottom is secure here, which is on my left-hand side of your screen. Take your bone folder and you're going to run it across the crease of your cardstock. This is going to ensure that you've got a score line that's exactly where it needs to be. And then you're going to crease this down and you're going to use your bone folder to secure that in place. Now I'm gonna bring in my silicone craft sheet and I'm gonna place that underneath. Adhesive, liquid glue, and hot glue will not stick to this, which is going to ensure that any adhesive I get a little zealous with will not fall on my work surface and I won't be fighting that sticky spot. I'm going to recommend you put the adhesive here, not here. So I've got my stamp and seal plus, it's very, very strong and I'm working it right across my edge. And I'm going to stop, and I got a little excited on the end, so let's go ahead and curl that under, and then we're going to press that in place. Now we're going to turn it, and we're going to do the exact same thing on this side, and now we're going to open this up, and we're going to add our other piece of Seal Plus right here, and then we're going to press. Now, for those of you that this is obtrusive, I want to make sure that you know, cut yourself another piece of cardstock, or even coordinating designer series paper, or even colored cardstock, and hide this if you don't like it. I will eventually decorate this and probably add a smaller piece so this looks bordered here. Doesn't bother me to be quite honest, but oh, is that pretty, isn't it? It is amazing. Now, let me show you what I did next. I took a, a piece of white cardstock. Here, I've got a piece here to show you. And I pulled out this gorgeous die from the artistic dies. This detailed die had my heart. Look at that. Isn't this spectacular? Not only did I die cut one, I die cut two. So I'm going to teach you a little trick here when you're trying to bring emphasis to a background. So I did that ahead of time, and I did take the liberty of gluing them together before you watched me, because I didn't think you'd want to sit and watch me glue all that and watch glue dry. But I want to talk to you about putting this together on that background. This card is stunning. You're gonna see that this is a little bit thicker than your normal die. If you stack your detailed dies, even two, three, four times, however excited you are together, the emphasis to your vellum and your backgrounds is gonna be so much better. It is super easy to do. 
because now we're going to add it to this and we're going to finish this card and I'm going to teach you the other three ways to use your alcohol markers. I'm going to flip this upside down on my silicone craft sheet. This has been a life changer. This is a precision tip that I have put the Stampin' Up! multi-purpose liquid glue inside the bottle. This little tip is going to ensure that I can get in those little tiny areas with ease. So let me show you how it works. It comes with a silicone cap. This is in my craft room favorites. You're going to love this. I'm going to shake the glue down. I want to get it near the tip. I always like to start it here on my silicone craft sheet to make sure that it's flowing well. I've never had a problem. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add glue in some inconspicuous larger areas. The one thing about this glue that I have found is it's extremely strong. So you do not have to put it in every little tiny place. Isn't this a joy not to have to worry about a thicker tip glue bottle? Now, I'm not going to go crazy because you guys are all watching and nobody likes to watch glue dry, right? So I'm going to kind of go a little bit here, just a little bit there to kind of tack it down. The other thing about this glue I want you to know, it's strong. So you don't need a whole lot. You don't have to cover every single area. All right, so let's go ahead and flip that over. Let me move that off to the side. Let's bring this back into your camera range. And I think I'm going to go this way. And then I'm going to tack that down. And I'm going to give that a little press with my hand so that it'll kind of just make contact with that vellum in that cardstock. I did not want to be bothered with dimensionals. Anybody else with me? Those are just too tiny. Now let's talk about this. What I usually do is I just kind of wipe it here in my silicone craft sheet. And I take that silicone cap and I cover that right up. This does not dry out. It is fantastic. It is a game changer for your liquid glues. I'm going to move that off to the side, and let's come back to this card. Now, I did do a little bit of stamping before you joined me, and that says, hello, lovely, and I'm going to flip that over, and I'm just going to keep it all nice and flat for right now, and I'm just going to use a little bit of adhesive just to get it on the card just so that you can kind of see it. And then this I decided to put down here. So just a little bit underneath there. Again, I want to make sure that that beautiful background stays the focal point. That's really, really important. And then let's add a little pop to this. And this is where I'm bringing in the genial gems. I'm going to tell you what, I find myself using these for lots and lots of things. They have a glitter base underneath there. There are glue dots already on the back, which make them super easy to use. So I'm going to grab a couple of those here and let's put the other one over here. And then I'm going to grab one more smaller one and let's bring it up here just to create a little bit of a triangle formation. So it's really pretty for the eye. Is this not stunning? Okay, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. But you are going to love what I'm showing you next. Okay, because I had so many techniques with the alcohol markers to teach you tonight, I actually have these in various totes. So I'm going to play um, a little musical totes here. Let me move that one off to the side for just a moment. And I'm going to bring the next one in. Let me move this back here. And now we're moving on to the next one. This, if you have not seen it, is in the um, catalog. And it's gorgeous. That new annual catalog that came out just a short time ago includes the new in colors. And if you look closely, and I'm going to hold them up, do you see the shimmer? This is Shimmer Vellum, and I think it's well overlooked in that annual catalog. But guess what? We're going to add alcohol markers to this. Are you ready? Okay, so let me move some of these other things out of the way. We're going to come back to the Teflon sheet to protect that work surface. And I chose to pull out that beautiful freesia color. Now, keep in mind, you can experiment with whatever you want. And like I've told you before, this is addicting. So get ready. It's lots and lots of fun. This time I'm going to switch over to two different colors. Let's start with this one. This is going to be the Dark Blackberry Bliss. Remember, even though it's shimmery, it's still a vellum. Now listen, I have to give you some important tips about this. Unlike glitter paper or glimmer paper, it's not rough with glitter, but it does have a shimmer to it. So I wanna give you a couple important tips about the alcohol markers. When you remove the cap, you do not want to use the tip. You Again, we want to preserve that so that we can color in our future projects. So you're going to use the side of the marker. You're not going to scribble it like we did with the first vellum. And I'm going to show you why. I'm going to do a very small area. So I'm going to do a little bit right here. Guess what? 
I found that that shimmer paper has a different surface and it requires a whole heck of a lot more alcohol in order for it to move. But watch, we're going to actually saturate it to move it. You can use the nasal syringe or you can come over to the heat tool. Now I've got it on low right now. And then I'm gonna turn it up a little higher just so we can kind of speed things up here. But you're gonna see that this color on that freesia shimmer paper really doesn't do a whole lot of popping, does it? It's kind of pretty, it's really tone on tone. But don't let that us underestimate you because watch what's going to come next. We're gonna make sure that this is good and dry because I'm gonna add in another color. I am not gonna do the whole thing. I have one for you that's already finished. I am then switching over to this. This is the dark, misty moonlight. What's shocking about this, okay, is on its own, it's pretty. And you might be thinking, it is? It is? Yeah, watch. Do you see it? Oh, so striking and so, so pretty. But let's add in a contrasting color. So I've got the dark, misty moonlight here. And just like before, we're going to be very careful about where we're going to put this color. And the more you experiment, the happier you're going to be. Work in small sections when you're working on this shimmer glimmer. I found that that worked way, way better. Remember that little nasal syringe? Well, we can move it around, but you see what happens? It's drying too quickly for that ink to spread. So on this paper specifically, I like the heat tool. Now, you're also going to notice that you have a little bit of a scribble background there, don't you? And it stays kind of dark compared to the other ones. So let me show you what you're going to do with this. I'm just going to dry this up so we can lift it a little bit. I'm going to clean that surface. So I want you to be aware of the fact that this is not going to completely dissipate like it did on the vellum. We're going to use that to our advantage. Are you ready? Okay. So what I did is I worked in actually larger sections and I created this. Is this not stunning? So these were the areas that I scribbled the color that left me kind of this puddle. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is fantastic to stamp an actual solid or detailed outline stamp on top of that shimmer. Of course, that beautiful freesia coordinated ribbon, a little bit of coordinated bling. There's no layers here. This is just tacked right on top. Now I'm gonna talk to you about how you adhere vellum to try to keep it from showing. I adhered it to a piece of white cardstock. Do you see that underneath there? You're gonna use a little bit of your liquid glue with a sponge and you're gonna go around the perimeter and maybe a dab in the center and adhere it to the white cardstock. You're gonna notice that on white paper, the colors are far more vibrant than they appear on your work surface. That's really, really important. Okay, that's two. But guess what? I did a couple other colors for you because I wanted to be able to share them with you. So let's bring that white cardstock in. And I have got this first one that I just shared with you. Look at this. This is that same Bermuda and pumpkin, but this now is on the papaya shimmer paper. Here's one other that I did. I mean, I've got all kinds of fun backgrounds to make cards with now. Do you notice too how the colors blended here? And I've got kind of like a bronzy tone here versus these definitions. I love that because guess what? This can go any which way and it's lots and lots of fun. So experiment with the different shimmer papers and you're gonna have totally different results. All right, let's move on to the next technique. Let me set that paper off to the side. We're gonna switch totes one more time. And this time, oh, hang on, things are just getting better by the minute. Let me grab my supplies from this tote. And it's this, it's acetate. Stampin' Up! calls it window sheets in my online store. I know this is going to be difficult to see because of the glare and because it's clear. I love the Stampin' Up! window sheets because the quality is much better than regular acetate, not only for your shaker cards, but for this technique. Remember how I just spoke to you a few minutes ago and I mentioned that every single time you use a different medium, there's a little bit of a different technique on how to get the color to spread. This is no different. I got my rag nearby, I've got my alcohol, and we are ready to go. This time I'm switching over to some pinks. So I have got the dark polished pink and the dark magenta. I know it's gonna be striking. They're very closely related in tones. 
it's important that you work them individually, otherwise it's gonna be completely lost. So let's go ahead and let's start with the darkest shade first, and I'm gonna work down here in the corner. Again, I'm not gonna fill the whole thing, I'm just gonna give you an idea of how it works. Can you hear it squeaking? That's because this is acetate. This is going to spread a whole lot faster and be a whole lot more runny because of the slippery surface. So let's make sure the nozzle's going the right way. We're gonna spray, and guess what? Can you see what happens to the pigmentation of this ink when you spray the alcohol? It's kind of a funky color, isn't it? All right, but let's spray a little bit more. Now you can actually move it with the sprayer, but let's talk about this. Now this is already evaporating. This is acetate, that's plastic, this is heat. Guess what's gonna happen if you overheat this? It's going to melt. So let's start on low. I'm keeping the gun far away because the last thing I wanna do is melt that plastic. If I turn it on high, watch what's gonna happen. It's gonna start to took, look it, you see how it spreads? But I'm very careful to make sure that I'm not in the same place each and every time. I know you're thinking that just took away all the color. Mm -mm, you're gonna be really, really surprised. You see those puddles? Watch. If you take it down onto your, your Teflon sheet, you're actually able to pick it up and move it. It's called the smoosh technique, actually. And then you can actually dry it from there. I'm not even worried about it being perfect. Now, let's go in here now, and let's clean up that work surface. I know you're thinking, that's nothing. Okay, it is. Watch. We are going to shift now over to that polished pink. And I'm going to look, and I can kind of see there's no color here at the bottom because I moved it. So I'm going to add a little bit here. Now let's try something different. Let's come back to the spritzer with the alcohol, and we're gonna spritz this one more time. Let's make sure it's going the right direction. That would not be good. Remember our little nail, nasal syringe? Well, now I can actually blow it. Do you see how much slower this color moves? Okay, I know some of you gotta have one of these at home, especially if you have kids or grandkids, right? It actually doesn't move the color much at all, but I love that because all it's doing is creating puffs of color underneath. Because of the high alcohol content, this is gonna dry very, very rapidly. Do you see the line here where those two colors have come together? Watch, we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna speed up some of that drying. Now I can turn this and manipulate this as well to speed up the drying. Do you see how it actually like evaporates? It's like there's no color, right? Yeah, there's color, trust me. All right, so let's close that. I am going to clean up that work surface and just clean this up. Let me bring in that piece of cardstock. Ready? Here's the white. It's there. It's there. No two of these are alike, but are you ready? Let me show you what I did when I had lots and lots of fun. Here is the card. You can see the differentiation in the colors here. So you can see the magenta and you can see the polished pink. Can you see them? There are variations of the same color, but they actually blend very, very well. I added a higher concentration of ink and worked on a very simple card. I kept the focal point simple because we don't want to take away from here. All this splatter, beautiful. All right, but I made some more for you because if you're like me, you're thinking, holy cow. All right, here's another one. Again, no two of these are going to be alike. Here's another. Look at how different these are. This one used that nasal syringe to kind of splatter up that color. You can cover the whole piece or just a tiny bit. Remember we just used that on the vellum? Look at this, is this incredible? I mean, it doesn't look like anything when you're holding it, but when you put it on your cardstock, oh, just gorgeous. I mean, I could see beach scenes with this. This is fantastic on the window sheets, better known as acetate. Okay, I've got one more acetate that I made. I have to show you because it's just cute and simple. Don't you love these in the Tropic dyes? I die cut this pineapple, which by the way, these dyes are fantastic. So same thing, I put it on white cardstock, added my acetate, just like I did my vellum with the sponge and the glue. I wanna call your attention to this. I took one of those little tiny resin dots and you know, I took my little white Stampin' Chalk marker. I added polka dots to it. I couldn't stand it. I was like, it needs some white on there to bring continuity to this card. Really, really fun. So this now is using your alcohol markers for a creative, unique, and easy background on acetate or window sheets. 
All right, we're not done yet. You guys ready for another one? Here we go. I am moving now down to my next tote. I'm switching up my markers and let me grab this. This is a piece of foil. Now you might be wondering, there's no way that's gonna work on foil. Oh <laughs> way, wait until you see this. So scratch out everything you just learned because basically it's the same concept, but the look is totally different. I've got my alcohol spritzer nearby. I've got my rag and now we are going to change colors. This time we are going to use, I'm looking at my notes real quick. I wanted to bring in the dark Bermuda, the pumpkin, and this time we're going to go to the dark Blackberry Bliss. Now I'm gonna show you another way to create a background, but I'm also gonna show you what to do with it. All right, so let's go ahead and let's start with that Blackberry. Now keep in mind that this is gonna work on any color foil. It does not have to be copper. So try your silvers, your golds, all your other colors. Again, I'm using that broad tip and I'm adding my color on here. My very first one, I purposely muddied it and I loved it. Let's go ahead and just experiment, right? Let's put a little of that dark pumpkin over here. Okay, you can see I'm not letting the colors really touch. I'm just kind of going around them. And then let's take some of that dark Bermuda and let's kind of go in here and a little here. And again, we could put some here and here. I think you get the gist, right? When we spray the alcohol, it's going to start to blend these. I had a hard time picking that up. All right, here's that nozzle, make it sure it's pointing down. I might run out of alcohol, so let me switch over to my other one. This is why I keep that little funnel nearby because I just fill it up and I don't have to leave my table. Watch, you're gonna activate the alcohol, but you are going to have to spray it heavily. Do you see what's happening? Now watch, if I blow that with the heat tool, it's gonna be all over. But if I use this, look what's gonna happen. I'm lightly able to mist these colors together. Look at, do you see how I'm moving the Bermuda? When this dries, I can add more. Look it up here. See how the syringe left it kind of chunky and you see how it runs? Oh, but wait till you see what I did with this. Let's move over to the heat tool. Watch what happens. We're turning the gun on and it's going to heat the foil paper. Let's run off some of that. I got a little excited, but do you see what's happening to the foil? Watch. This is probably my favorite of all of them, to be honest with you. Let's go ahead and just dry that up a little bit more just so that I can hold it up so to show it to you. All right, that looks pretty good. Let me turn that off. And then I am gonna wipe off my hands and let's go ahead and let's pick this up. Let's try not to get this all over Lisa. That's always a good thing. All right, and, and trying to stay in your camera view. All right, I'm going to tip it. And you're probably thinking, I really don't see anything. Oh, oh, but wait, are you ready? Here's another one. I added more layers of that Blackberry Bliss. Do you see it? So I got more of like a marbly look. And then I thought, you know what? This is so cool, but how would I use this as a background? And I said, oh, I know what I'm doing. I'm gonna use my dies. So I took my stitched leave dies. I die cut that foil. And I just made a very simple card. This says hope, beautiful stamp set. Really love, love of leave stamp set and those stitched leave dies. Isn't this incredible? All came from here. So instead of stamping or using it as a background, die cut this to get yourself a gorgeous background. All right, now as a bonus, I've got a couple other things I wanna share with you. There are a couple other ways with these markers. Let me switch totes just one more time and I'm gonna do a quick demonstration for you. The next thing I have is a little glass bowl here and you need something that's not gonna just be corroded by this concentration of alcohol, super important. So I've got my alcohol here and I'm going to pour a little bit in there. Keep in mind, it's going to evaporate very quickly. So if you're gonna do a bunch of these, don't be stingy, give yourself quite a bit of alcohol. I am taking another piece of vellum. Now, many of you have been on YouTube, you've probably seen this before, but I'm gonna show it to you very quickly because you're gonna to need to know this for the next thing I'm gonna show. Pumpkin again, we're gonna scribble. Bermuda Bay, we're gonna scribble. Little here, little here. Remember, these are alcohol markers. So that means that they're going to evaporate very quickly on this vellum because of the alcohol base. All right, I think you guys get the idea. So we're gonna put a little here, a little there, right? You're going to take a brush. You're going to dip it 
inside the alcohol. I have learned you don't want this soaking wet. And then what you're going to do is you're going to do what I call stippling. I'm going to move you in a little bit here. And you're going to stipple this. What's going to happen is the alcohol from the brush is breaking up the alcohol color on the vellum. And if you're not careful, you can get a lot of bronze, which I love personally. Let's go ahead and clean that brush off. I don't want too much alcohol, but I want to be able to move it. And you're going to create a stippled background. Again, you're going to look at this and think, that's awful. Nope, it's not. Wait till I show you. Here we go with that white piece of cardstock. Let me move that out of the way. And that gave us this. Is this not incredible? Beautiful, beautiful. So a myriad of colors here. So this one, I added some of that Blackberry Bliss along with that Bermuda and that pumpkin. But I love the drips. I love the layers. And that's doing sections at a time. So what you could do is just do one area of color and then add another. I needed to show you that because, are you ready? This is stippled too, but this is on a window sheet. So this is on the acetate and this is on the vellum. Could you ask, could you stipple on um, the foil? Why not? Can you stipple on the shimmer vellum? Absolutely. I want you to go crazy having a good time with this. Let's talk very quickly about your brush. You're probably wondering, does that hurt the paintbrush? Now, if you got a good brush, you're good to go. You're just going to clean your brush off. I ran mine underneath tap water. I just made sure I ran through those bristles really, really good. And then I let it air dry. Now, let's go ahead and do this really quickly. Let's go and look at these projects one more time. Here is the first card that we created tonight oh, with the vellum. So you've got a absolutely gorgeous blown background with alcohol markers. And then we did that shimmer vellum here. And then of course we did the acetate. Oh my goodness, I cannot wait for you to start chiming in and telling me which one is your favorite. There was the one with the pineapple. And then last but not least, we had the one with the foil. You hear me rummaging through my totes. And then the one with the foil down here at the bottom. Aren't these striking? Absolutely gorgeous. Now don't worry about my hands. I'm going to take this and I'm going to spritz it on there and then clean them off and add a lot of moisturizer and I am good to go. But I think it's totally worth it. Tell me which is your favorite. I'm going to turn that camera around. Oh, I love reading this. You're going to look at your alcohol markers in an entirely different way. And not just because of the backgrounds, but on the different mediums. Now, I saw someone asked, what is your favorite medium? Oh, I guess it depends on what you're going for. I love the foil because I think it's fantastic and it's different. And I think people are going to go, where'd you get that? And you're going to tell them you made it. But I can't help but resisting these cool backgrounds. Aren't these gorgeous? Now, a couple things I want you to know. Don't miss downloading this. This is going to give you pictures for all those projects. This project sheet is going to be available down in the link of the video description below. Do me a favor, head over to lisastampstudio.com. And if you're new, you're going to scroll down about halfway and you're going to get a pop-up that asks you to subscribe to my weekly free newsletter and you want to because I share a tutorial in there that is not shared on any of my other platforms. And I would love it to send it to you. It's a no frills email. You'll absolutely love getting those tutorial ideas. Do me a favor. Also check out my PDF tutorial library. It is huge. And you'll find that all underneath the classes tab. And because you're here live with me, I want to also tell you, I have a huge retired grab bag for sale. So I mean, lots of different grab bags with products that are now retired that you can get at great prices. That's under shop all the way at the bottom. It'll say 2021 retired grab bag products. You could scoop up a bunch of great stuff really at a good price. Now mark your calendar. And if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do that below and hit that little bell icon and the word all because you're not going to want to miss it. I'm coming back to you next week, but it's going to be on Wednesday, which is July 14th for an amazing fun phone card. And I'm looking forward to sharing it with you. Thank you so much, Gina, for all your moderating tonight. Thank you all for being here with me. I look forward to sharing more with you next week. Have a great rest of your day.